Welcome to this message of encouragement. Today I wanted to talk to my fellow Christians. Uh, this is kind of a, a little rant session. I don't mean to step on anybody's toes or make anybody mad, but um, you know I want to take this time to kind of you know talk about uh, that movie that people are just. Uh, you know, just praising and, and glorifying uh, called the Jesus Revolution. But before I get started, I always like to ask those of you who are watching to please pray for other people. Prayer is a powerful thing and needs are met when you pray for other people. Pray for the sick, for those that's lost a loved one, for those facing surgeries, for our nation's leaders. There are just many, many needs out there in the world and people need to be lifted up in prayer before God. So as I said, I want to take this time, this is kind of my rant, uh, you know, toward um, just kind of letting out some frustrations because so many people, you know, are really, you know, glamorizing and glorifying the, uh, the movie entitled The Jesus Revolution. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about about it today because uh, Christians have not done any type of research whatsoever. They just, one friend says, oh, the movie's great, the movie's great, let's run and see the movie. And, and you know, they're just going by word of mouth. And, and let's look at uh, 1 John chapter 4 says, Beloved, it says, uh, believe not every spirit. He's telling us to try the spirit. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits on whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world to deceive many. And so, you know, people are not, you know, trying the spirits and things that, you know, come out of Hollywood. You know you've got to do that, that research and look into it. So let's look forward. Let's first look at what actually got the Jesus movement started. Uh, most of you that, that, that are, you know, are seeing the movie weren't actually born during that time. And those that are my age, you were actually uh, around 1966, 67, or 68, was six, seven, and eight years old. And you will have, you know, zero knowledge of this movement that was going on back in California unless you had a much older brother or sister. Uh, I did. Uh, my brother was born in 1951. I had a sister born, I think, around 1953. So by the time that the 60s came along, they were in their teens, and that was the time that the hippie movement started. And it, you know, come across the country, and, you know, all the kids, even the little kids, wearing flowers in their head, um, the hair, and, and the girls were taking eyeshadow and on this young ones and on themselves, you know, putting little peace signs here and little flower here and you know you know the girls are called flower children and it was you know it was meant to be a fun time but let's look at the reality of this movement so around 1968 uh, or the early 70s uh, there, there was a new movement that came out from 1967 there was this massive gathering you know in California it's like all the young people you know were headed to California and like I said it was just spreading across the country it was this new movement for peace everybody wanted peace 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 and harmony peace and harmony and they also wanted free love they wanted free sex that's the sexual immorality the permission to have just sex with anybody and everybody uh, they wanted to unwind, to free the mind, to turn, to, to tune in and to turn on. And, and these these were the young people, if you remember, if you ever bothered to read any articles, they were fighting against the establishment, against morals and values. They wanted freedom from the eight to five jobs. Most of them went through that time period into their adult life. They didn't even have jobs. They just, they couldn't function, they went through the drug culture, couldn't function, couldn't even hold down a job. Most of them, sadly, ended up uh, not, not making it into past their, <laughs> you know, much past their teens or into their adult life. And they also wanted freedom from the responsibility of family. Like I said, they wanted the free sex, but, you know, they didn't want the responsibility of all these kids they were bringing into the world. Uh, it was also, you know, during this time, it was a lot of unsettlement. And, you know, the California thing, the young people began to search. You know, they wanted that spiritual connection. Generation after generation after generation I always seek for that spiritual connection, either with Buddha, Hare Krishna, or, you know, whatever's, you know, out there. Everybody wants a connection uh, w with something. And, and, and these people, they, they wanted, you know, complete and total bliss. Like I said, that 
that harmony, that peace and love, and that they wanted that that complete and total bliss that that only drugs provided a temporary, uh, you know, barrier for. So that's when the the Jesus movement, because everybody's like. Oh, Jesus will give you this lasting peace, this lasting comfort, this lasting love. And, um, you know, if they would have stuck with it, it, you know, would have been different. But like I said, most of them were involved with drugs and alcohol. And that's when they were finding Jesus and communicating with Jesus during these acid trips or whatever trip they were on. <laughs> and they, it actually, their salvation didn't stick with them. Uh, because, you know, they just couldn't find it in themselves to obey the, the Word of God. And I'll, you know, go on and explain this further. Uh, these people were always, you know, like I said, claiming to find Jesus um, during, like, you know, drug experiences. Especially, you know, Lonnie Frisbee, the main character um, in the movie of the Jesus Revolution. Now, I want you to take notice here. Pay very, very close attention to what I'm trying to tell you. This was the start this movement that Lonnie Frisbee did, this is a story of the mecha church and the man-centered gospel. This is this is the very beginning of it. This is also the very beginning of of the the, the rock gospel music. Uh, this is the the movement for the the watered down version of the scriptures. It it became like I said back then. This was the start of it's all about me 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 me. Okay. And, and it's, I want to live for Jesus. I do. I want to live for Jesus, but I want to live for Jesus on my terms, okay? We, we don't want to follow, you know, the Bible, the scriptures, or, or, or any type of doctrine. I want to live for Jesus, and I want to do it on my terms. And it, it's all, it's, it's, it's not, it wasn't about um, that movement. It wasn't about repentance. It, it wasn't about breaking bad habits like drugs or alcohol or just some had sex, sexual addictions. Uh, it wasn't about, um, you know, it, it was just, it was about, you know, Jesus make me feel good, or Jesus give me what I want, or let's live how we, we want to live. You know, I want Jesus, but let's just live how we want to live. Uh, this is also about, like I said, uh, popularizing, you know, the, the, the worship music got started here, because people were saying, oh, well, you know, the, the old hymnals, you know, they're just out of date, and we need something new. We need something that satisfies our mind and our ear. Something that, you know, makes us rock and shout and hop. <laughs> okay, so since I'll give you a little background, let's talk about the main character, Lonnie Frisbee. Everybody's uh, glamorizing him and praise the Lord. He was a hippie. He was a preacher. He was this, that, and the other. Let's talk about what Lonnie Frisbee actually was. He was a young homosexual male that battled homosexuality from his young adulthood all the way up to his death in 1993 when he died of AIDS. Lonnie struggled with homosexuality. Uh, even, you know, preaching, claiming to be saved, uh, he struggled with it. And, and he and that's why the, a lot of the church people had to back away from him because, you know, that wasn't acceptable and he was still doing it. So, you know, let's look again, you know, who were, were glamorizing a young homosexual male who was living in sin, who had not been changed by Christ, who had not turned away from his sin. Understand that. He was living in the sin. He had not turned away from it. When we accept Christ. Jesus changes us. We go on to produce good fruit. People can see that great change in us. People were not seeing that change uh, in, in Lonnie Frisbee. Uh, he also, like I said, struggled uh, from his, his youth up until the time he died. From what I understand in many articles, he struggled with continuing into the drug abuse. He, he continued to struggle with that up through uh, till you know, his death. Uh, the, the Christian, you know, community is, is downplaying, like I said, and, and you know, everybody, oh, I love the movie, but they're downplaying Lonnie Frisbee's sin. And, and, and you know, they, the, the, the theme in the movie says, God uses flawed people. Yes, he does. We all have flaws. We all have character defects, but like I said, once we are saved, we are changed. Jesus changes us. We show positive fruit. People can see that positive, you know, uh, in us. Uh, they see we've we've broken uh, free from bad habits, from drug addictions, from sexual addictions, from uh, you know ignoring our family, whatever the bad habit may be. People see the change, and like I say, um, people didn't. 
you know, they didn't see that change in Lonnie. And flawed people do not continue to live in sin. They don't continue to, to go on and on in, 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 in their sin. And that's what, you know, Lonnie did. Uh, unrepented sin, you know, such as sexual uh, immorality, uh, you know, and th things like that. So, you know, anyway, what I'm trying to say is the Christian community should not celebrate uh, you know the, the the life of this of this man, uh, like I said, uh, these people that that were involved, that there it was the beginning of the mega church of of the man centered gospel. Like I said, it's all about me, 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 me. It wasn't you know about you know the true coming to God. It was that it was the birth, like I said, of of what we're seeing today. And at toward the end of time, you're going to see that great turning away uh, from God, the false prophets, just like Jesus said. And this is where all of it began. I just want to make sure that you understood. This is where it all began. Watered down, and the man son of the gospel started, you know, right up there in California. And so I know people want to say a lot of good things about uh, Chuck Smith. I don't know that much about him. I have read a few articles about him. And I know, uh, and I looked in Wikipedia, one thing that he is known for is predicting the end of time like he did in 1981, which the end of time did not take place. But he was just one of those uh, false, you know, teachers. It was, you know, the time's going to end, and the world's going to end, Jesus is coming back, you know, I think it was like New Year's Eve, and he had all his members to gather together, it was going to be like at midnight, well, you know, that proved him to be wrong, and then uh, with the September 11th terrorist attacks, he was saying that was God's punishment for, uh, for those who, you know, had uh, legal abortions. So, you know, Chuck Smith was not, you know, without controversy, you know, in himself. That's what I'm trying to, you know, make you see. And like I said, look all this up. Don't take my word for it. It's like when somebody teaches you something from the Bible, don't take their word for it. Look it up yourself. Research it. Understand what's being. Just don't be, you know, just told and, you know, everything just come at you like, oh, I believe this, I believe that. Anything this one says, that one says, I just believe it. You know, don't be like that. You know, uh, try these spirit. Test the spirits as we're told. Okay, let's look at the main character in the movie. I know everybody's been making over him, and always oh, such a good actor. He just he looks like Jesus and all this. Well, let's take you know a look at him. Uh, I want you to see a couple of interviews uh, in between so you can understand how far off the wall you know this guy really is. But one thing I want you to know that Jonathan uh, or Romy, uh, the main character in this movie, he is detestable, detestable to God. And let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 18. It says, Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or their daughter in the fire, who practices a divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or cast spell, or who is a medium or a spiritist, or who consults with the dead. Now let's look at an, an interview where Jonathan uh, Romy is clearly saying that he uh, he tried to communicate with uh with the dead man that's Lonnie Frisbee he uh, he's going to tell you you're going to hear him say I laid on his grave and I you know side by side I'm trying to was trying to connect with Lonnie Frisbee we just read here it's detestable to God. It, it, it's the same as if you do put your child in a fire and sacrifice it to other gods. That's the way God feels. It, it doesn't matter. Engaging in all this is detestable to to the Lord. So let, let's listen to uh, to uh, like I said th this first interview uh, where uh, Jonathan says he you know is praying to a dead man. Um, before I started work, I went over to Christ Cathedral. And uh, I, I sat by his grave and I prayed a rosary with him. So, you know, here again, I want to redirect you back to Deuteronomy chapter 18, where Jonathan, you know, he says he prayed the rosary, you know, to Lonnie Frisbee, who was dead. He is at his grave. And, and we'll listen in the next video where he says, you know, that he laid, you know, on his grave and he tries to connect. Uh, with a dead man. And like I said, this re reference back over to Deuteronomy 18 is detestable to God. I sat down and I prayed with him. Um, the, the, the space just to his right is empty, so I got to sit down. Or lie, at one point I even lied down because I just thought it would be kind of interesting to try to connect in some way. That's probably more information than you need or may even want to publish. But that said, uh, 
I, you know, I, it's the truth. And so I finished praying with him. And then finally, I want you to listen in this interview where Jonathan uh, Romy says that, that he gets a sign from Lonnie Frisbee. A dead man gives him a sign by, you know, he's wanting to know if he should play this part because he wants to bring, like, Lonnie this great justice or, or whatever. And he hears this, he says he, uh, from the church, he hears this, this organ note. Ah, like it, it all comes at one time. And he's like, he looks at it and he's, oh, okay, thank you. I mean, this is nuts. And this is what Christians are not doing any research over. They're just word of mouth. Hey, this is a great movie. Hey, I saw it. It's a great movie on Facebook. Let's all run see it. This is why you should do your research and not get involved in these things, especially things that you know that come out of Hollywood. Well, let's look at Charles Manson. I know most of you are too young to remember Charles Manson, but he had a Jesus family following. Many of his members believe that he was Christ Jesus, but for those of you uh, who've seen uh, past documentary articles know that Charles Manson was a, a murderer and also instructed his followers to commit murder. And so I finished praying with him and I said, Lonnie, I want to honor you with this film and I really want to, um, to, to to bring justice and, and you know the testament to the gifts of God's grace and and powers that you you know displayed while you were on this earth, and so if this is a good idea that I do this film, have somebody give me a sign. Give me a sign. Have God give me a sign. Mm -hmm. And the minute the words left my mouth, behind me there was a door open to the cathedral, and this giant cord rang out for about five seconds and then from the organ from the organ wow i hadn't heard it before and that's the very organ that used to be there when it was the chris it's the same organ that when really? it was the crystal cathedral mm -hmm. it was sent out and refurbished and whatnot but it's the same one so i heard that and i was like okay thanks for that <laughs> uh and I was, and I was, as I was saying, people from every generation, every generation is always searching for a savior, uh, you know, to to, to connect with. That they that they want a savior, they want a God. But m most generational people, they're searching, um, you know, for a savior. That's that like in the Jesus movie, that they were not, cons they wanted a savior that was not concerned with sin. That's what they were looking for. They were searching for a savior that wasn't. A concern with repentance. They were searching for a savior that wasn't concerned with righteousness and holiness. And, and they were searching for a savior that was not concerned with judgment. And, you know, these are the things that are still going on in the church today. The church members, like I said, uh, you know, they, they, they don't want the preacher talking about uh, sin, and the preacher doesn't. He might use the word sin, but he doesn't say, well, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. If you do these things, God's going to bless you, and, and God will, you know, he will, he will give you prosperity if you'll follow his instructions, you will obey him, and, you know, so, so forth like that. They won't tell you, you know, the things that you're not supposed to be doing. And, and lastly, you know, I just wanted to add that, you know, that people that, when, when seeking Jesus, you know, people, they, they, there's this great falling away that people don't even want Jesus anymore. Like I said, they want a different kind of Savior, a different type of Jesus. And these are the people, you know, that that's going to... Uh, be deceived by the Antichrist, be deceived by the false prophets. People, you know, like like myself, you know, I'm not trying to hurt any Christian's feelings, but I'm just trying to warn you to wake up to the reality. This this soft softness for homosexuality, and this softness for same sex marriages, and this softness for for drinking in the church and uh, you know the getting drunk and the, you know the smoking weed and his cigarettes and having all the these addictions and bad habits the Christians have become well you know that's okay they go to church every Sunday but you know it's not okay and and you know these are the things that we need to talk to people about because you know th they can lose their salvation I know people are being taught you can't lose your salvation 
but but you you can you you people are not going to enter into the kingdom of heaven you know doing all these sinful things and trying to serve a different Jesus we, we serve you know a, a, a Jesus like I said of love a, 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 a God that's wanting us to repent a, a God of judgment a God of, that expects us and he's he's righteous and he expects us to be righteous he's holy he expects us to be holy he doesn't expect us to be out acting like a bunch of, of goats. I call them clowns, but the Bible says like a bunch of goats. They don't act like sheep, they act like a bunch of goats. And like I said, I just call them a bunch of clowns. So, uh, like I said, I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. I just want people to see the realization of this movie and what is being glamorized that shouldn't be glamorized. Christians should be turning their back on this movie and instead of all going to see it and, you know, yay, yay. And, you know, I don't want to make fun of anybody. Like I said, you know, that's not right. But uh, I hope this message has been encouraging to you. I hope it has been uplifting to you. And I hope that in, in the future that your goal when you see or hear anything uh, um, is to do that research. Just Google search. You can Google search anything. Find it in the Wikipedia article and, and you will see if something is right or wrong or something about an individual, something about a movie. You know, always stay knowledgeable. At, like the scriptures say, try the spirits. There, Jesus said, you know, there, there are, you know, um, you know, wolves out here in sheep's clothing and, and false prophets. People are being deceived. They're going to continue to be deceived. Don't be one of those that's deceived. God bless. Stay safe.